In order for food to survive a long trip to, say, Mars, it must store easily and have a long shelf life. This makes for some less than appetizing meals. How can we feed our astronauts food they actually want to eat? It'll take some creative thinking and a 3D printer. I'm Sophie, and welcome to The Countdown. NASA awarded $125,000 in grant money to the Systems and Materials Research Cooperation to design a printer that makes pizza. Like most 3D printers on the market, this food printer will build its pizza in layers, starting with dough, then sauce, and finally toppings. While this is a challenge, there's another important hurdle to cross making the pizza taste good. The ingredients must come from cartridges of oils and powders capable of lasting 30 years. And the components of these cartridges include organic protein powders made of insects and grass. Not exactly haute cuisine. Still, if the project succeeds, 3D printers may soon satisfy the taste buds of astronauts on the International Space Station. And printed food could also keep up the morale of long-distance space travelers, such as Mars colonists. A neutron star is what's left over after a star goes supernova. It burns very hot, spins at insanely high speeds, and is super dense because it's composed mostly of neutrons. A thimbleful of a neutron star's liquid core has a mass of over 100 million tons. Some neutron stars have a strong magnetic field, which has earned them the mythological sounding name Magnetar. Scientists report some strange behavior in a magnetar called IE22595586 this week in the journal Nature. Magnetars are known to suddenly speed up, rotating faster than normal. Scientists call this a glitch, and while we don't know for sure what causes them, the leading model is that the liquid material in the star's core is spinning faster than the crust and occasionally contributes to its overall rotation. But magnetar IE22595586 also slows down suddenly, which is known as an anti-glitch. But there is no explanation for this under the leading model, which is forcing scientists to re-examine what they know about the interiors of neutron stars. Since its launch in 2009, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope has discovered a vast array of exoplanets. But now, a hardware failure threatens to cut off the flow of new worlds. To find planets, Kepler must be able to look in the correct direction. And this task requires a set of four flywheels, which aim and stabilize the telescope. If a wheel malfunctions, as one did in July 2012, the other three can keep Kepler on target. However, if Kepler loses a second wheel, it's in trouble. And that's exactly what happened this month. With two wheels out of commission, Kepler has gone into safe mode, with motion controlled by its thrusters rather than its wheels. NASA suspects a structural failure has caused the wheel to stop spinning, which would make any repairs very difficult. Still, they hope to design new projects which will allow Kepler to keep gathering data in a hybrid mode, controlled by a combination of thrusters and the remaining wheels. But here's the thing. Any future observations are icing on the cake. After all, Kepler completed its official mission back in November 2012. It's already gathered enough information to keep scientists busy for a long time. Here on Earth, ambitious drivers compete to see who drives the fastest. But off-world, it's all about who's covered the greatest distance. A lunar rover set the previous American record in 1972, when the Apollo 17 astronauts drove it for 35.74 kilometers. And now, the robotic Opportunity rover is the new champion. Since landing on Mars in 2004, Opportunity has crossed 35.76 kilometers of the red planet, and it's still going strong. Despite its new status as the American champ, Opportunity will have to pick up the pace to keep up with the USSR. Back in 1974, the Soviets drove their remote-controlled rover, called Lunokhod 2, across 37 kilometers of the moon's surface. Although the Opportunity team would love to break the international off-world distance record, they can't focus entirely on racing. After all, science still comes first. 11 billion light years from Earth, a really big baby is about to be born. <coughs> no, not a baby baby. Two galaxies are on a collision course, and their merger will create a huge new elliptical galaxy. 
At the time that we're observing, the galaxies are still 62,000 light years apart and contain a combined total of about 400 billion stars. Each year, they form 2,000 new stars, about 1,000 times as many as the Milky Way. Once the merger is complete, this fast rate of star formation means that the new elliptical galaxy will have a short life, running out of star-making materials in about 200 million years. But actually, the elliptical galaxy has already formed, run out of gas, and died, because the light from the merger must travel a long way to reach us, we're actually seeing the galactic crash as it took place billions of years ago, three billion years after the Big Bang to be exact. The giant galaxy may be long dead, but thanks to data from the Herschel Space Observatory and other instruments, we can still watch it come into existence. And that's your countdown. Links to all of these stories are in the description below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Space Lab channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at SA underscore Space Lab. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick, and I'll be snacking on printed pizza. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is terrible! Ugh.